like hold on to your miners guys or hold on to silver at least and the metals because uh those are going to be they're going to have long strong meaningful uh, trends now have to All right, welcome to Live from the Vault. My name is Shane Moran, and I'll be your host for this episode. And from the entire Live from the Vault team worldwide, we want to thank you again for your continued support. As you can imagine, the community keeps growing more and more every single week. And there's a lot to talk about during these historic times. And Andrew McGuire is in the house with our special guest, Patrick Kareem. And we'll be talking gold. So with that, it's going to be, I know it's going to be an amazing episode. So fasten your seatbelts and Live from the Vault gives you access to information and updates that you just can't get anywhere else. And this episode is going to be no exception. And just before we get to talking gold with Andrew McGuire and our special guest, Patrick Kareem, remember to please keep spreading the word about this channel by hitting that like button, uh, sharing this information and smash that subscribe button. And it really helps us to reach even more and more people about these important topics. And then while you're at it, if you haven't already done so, just hit that bell if you'd like to be notified as each episode goes live. So with that, let me introduce our special guest, Mr. Patrick Kareem. He's a chart trader, gold and silver aficionado. He's the co-founder of NorthStarBadCharts.com. You can find him on Twitter and also at NorthStarBadCharts.com. And so with that, let's head over to the UK and talking gold with the one and only Andrew McGuire and our special guest, Patrick Kareem. Over to you, Andy. Well, it's our pleasure today uh, to bring on uh, Patrick Kareem. Um, and he is a, an eminent chart specialist. And it was interesting is because in our world, we very much focus on the fundamentals, uh, where the wholesale levels are, and, you know, sometimes and obviously technicals are very, very important. So and obviously, especially when you start to look at where these aggregated bids might be on a, on a different time levels. But I think uh, Patrick has got a lot to bring to the table. So welcome, Patrick. And uh, if you could walk us through uh, some of your thoughts, obviously, we're seeing a lot of volatility right now. So maybe start on the short term and then perhaps look at the, uh, the bigger picture. It's uh, guys. First, it's an honor, uh, Andrew. I, I've watched all, all, all your podcasts. I, I can't believe it. There, uh, I'm talking with you right now. There, it's a it's a true honor. And uh, well, like the way I see it, I took a backdoor entry to the whole precious metals complex because because of the chart trading. Eventually, in 2018, I saw that gold was breaking out versus Canadian dollars. It was breaking out versus Australian dollars. I said, what, "What's happening here? The, this this thing is breaking out against all these fiat currencies." But before that, I was in the mindset. I didn't really understand fiat currencies. They were measured against one another. It's like an oscillator and it hides the true weakness because when you measure them in something real, then you see the long-term charts. They're just, uh, all these fiat currencies, they're, they're just going down, down the drain. But then that's when I knew that we had an arbitrage play with gold express and US dollar because when you look at all the charts breaking out, versus all these currencies, man, it's a question of time. This thing's going to break out versus the US dollar. And that was back in 2018. And uh, since then, like I haven't looked back and that's like the, the beauty of the precious metals complexes. You look at the gold and then, oh, baby brother silver. Oh, then you learn about the gold silver ratio. Then you see the gold silver ratio actually looks like uh, um, the, the, the VIX chart. It's able to sniff out uh, uh, imminent uh, mar market liquidity crunches. It gives you hindsight. So those are commodities, their money, the financial instruments, right? The, these charts, they, they actually uh, represent uh, the financial health of, of the markets. And uh, yeah, so I think I took a backdoor entry through my chart trading to what you, you've learned over the years through like the fundamentals, through like all your experiences. It, it just, I, I wish that on everybody to, to look at the precious metals complex because it's a gateway to the, the health of everything that we're dealing with right now, right? There's, there's this great chart, Andrew, it's the gold to SPX ratio. And that chart, when, when the gold to SPX ratio starts turning in one favor or the other, and right now it's, the SPX is about to start losing versus gold. Gold's about to start outperforming versus SPX on the, like a long, long-term timeframe. The, just that racial chart, it looks exactly like the silver chart. 
So somebody is looking, say, oh, silver, when is it going to go up? It's not going up. Well, when the capital flows start leaving the U.S. equities and they start going into uh, uh, gold, then silver is going to go ballistic. Uh, the miners are going to go ballistic because that's all that's missing right now. It's a true transition. And I think since 2018, 19, it takes years, this stuff to play out. You can't look at like too close a time frame. But uh, we're turning a corner right now. So once that those capital flows, for whatever reason, inflation or all the macro tidal waves behind it, start going to gold uh, instead of U.S. equities, man, uh, like hold on to your miners, guys, or hold on to silver at least and the metals because uh, those are going to be, they're going to have long, strong, meaningful uh, trends. Yes, that's, that's really interesting. And uh, so... Obviously, you've got this chart here, gold and silver, 16-year moving averages since 1932. It's nice to step back and look at the big picture occasionally, Patrick. It's, uh, this, this, I put out this picture because there's always, this, this is the problem of silver. It went ballistic uh, in the, the 1980s. It went ballistic in 2011, but for short periods of time. So when you're considering macro tidal waves, these short period of times, they're not that meaningful, right? Because they're on the end of the curve of, uh, like, you know, the, those bell curves, the statistics, they, they were, there was a lot of fear of missing out, a lot of people talking about silver. But if you take a step back, that chart, I have the 16-year uh, moving averages for gold and silver, and starting back at 1930 or something. And you see over time, this has just been going up and up and up. And people saying, ah, oh, gold and silver, they're, or at least silver is way below its, uh, its uh, 1980 peak or 2011 peak at $50. But look at that moving average. We're way higher than where we were in the 1980s. It's just this, this roadmap is just taking a long, long time to, to play out, guys. And I could have probably overlaid the, the money supply on top of that or all the other financial instruments. Essentially, these things are skewed to go from bottom left uh, to top right over time. But that's where the timing comes in. It's to try to buy, not in fear of missing out when silver's at $50. It's to try to understand where it is in the um, in the, the landscape of the financial world. Like I said, the gold uh, to SPX ratio. If we're at a turning point, and you, now we know with TA, technical analysis, that the opportunity cost is lower and lower because we're approaching an important major turning point. Yes, we could be off by six months, a year. But when you're talking about gold and silver, those are small time frames. If you're able to catch the, the turn, then if you're able to hold on, because that's another thing, there's um, uh, just, just the volatility of silver is going to shoot up 100%. Or it's going to rip your face for, for two, three, four months. Then it's going to... It's going to consolidate for six, six months, eight months, two years going sideways like we've had now. But if you get in early, you won't, you won't feel forced to sell when you have those drawdowns, right? It's the people who buy it, fear of missing out that like the people who bought Bitcoin, let's say at uh, 60,000. Now they're kind of trapped emotionally because Bitcoin goes down and they're hoping that it always keeps going up. But if they would have bought like the TA was telling them to buy when uh, let's say Bitcoin was breaking out at 10,000, when no, when Michael Saylor was not talking about Bitcoin, then you were creating, then when you have a pullback much higher up going down, you're less susceptible to sell because of, uh, you know, you, you're still in the profits, right? So you're, you're not afraid to tell your wife that you're still in the profit, but if you never want to tell your wife that you're losing money, right? So you'd rather hold on and hope it goes back up. So understanding that silver is cheap and even gold if, where it is now today, it's it's still cheap, but silver is way more cheap than gold right now, relatively speaking, especially when you measure it versus gold or versus the SPX. Then when it goes ballistic to 50, 60 or $80 and it pulls back to 30 or 40, it's still much higher than what it is today. And that's how you're able to ride these uh, lock, lock steps or these, these ladder steps through a bull run. You can't get in the late. Look, if the... Uh, I don't know who, if CNBC would, would be touting silver today, I'd be doubtful, you know, but look, I'm getting hate. I have so many trolls, Andrew, you can't even believe it on Twitter. It's crazy, but that means it, we're still at a good, a good moment, you know, that um, there's no, like, there's really nobody thinks, everybody thinks silver's going to crash. Everybody thinks gold is maybe, there's going to be deflation, inflation is transitory. You still hear these things out there, right? Yeah, Patrick, I think this is so interesting because I think we're taking, speaking to two kind of audiences here. Obviously, there's the stacker. <clears throat> and, and I know you went on Wall Street Silver recently. And, you know, a stacker 
he's looking at this as an opportunity to buy. Um, now, obviously, you're also dealing with um, a, a, maybe a hedge fund manager. You're dealing with people who are looking at the uh, at, at the paper markets, essentially the paper markets, which are, um, you know, so so. Yes, if you've got, or you may need to know when to hedge or to 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 un, un, unhingulate hedges. So it's interesting in that respect because, um, and I think what we're talking about here, obviously, is a stacker. I mean, come on, just you just average in and 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 you're a winner. And I think you know that that's the ultimate game. We all know that there's so much paper market dilution uh, or, or printing money printing that, that ultimately. Um, the only real money is, of course, uh, physical gold, physical silver has been around for 6,000 years. But, but I think what's interesting is here, because I'm looking at this, and we deal with people very much that would look at these charts. And, and what it is, because um, the people are siloed into, a lot of US-centric traders are siloed into the COMEX, the casino, as we call it. And, and it's no, no surprise that it is a casino. Uh, because I'm, I mean, for example, I had to get rid of all of my clients in 2013 that, that were U.S. centric, um, simply because they were cut off from trading the over-the-counter markets, and so they were siloed into the COMEX. So now it's become like this siloed thing where you, obviously, these these moving averages charts that you're they're showing up are actionable points, and it's interesting. So yeah, please expand on because I, I get what you're saying. Well. So I'm going to zoom in right now. We're going to go to the gold chart. And there's, there's, a, there's a nice concept to measure. I found a way because I'm an emotional person. And I always, as a technical analysis, I, I try to find tools which are going to help me situate my emotions versus the reality. So the further you are away from a moving average, the more the emotions high. And I could have probably put uh, here, I have the gold chart like uh, where it's written minimal target 3550. But at the bottom pane, that's the distance from the 16-year moving average. So essentially, since 1967, every time gold has went ballistic, every, you could see that by it distance, distancing its moving average at an ever, ever increasing pace. And all the, the headline news like uh, death of the U.S. equities, in ni- like in the 1980s, we, we, that, that was a going motto. That, if I would have looked at that chart, I would have said, oh, my God, I'm so stretched from the moving average. Of course, people think the U.S. equities can go nowhere and gold's like the ultimate thing that's going to go to a million, right? But as a chart trader, you should realize that you're, you're so deviated from the mean, from the average, that eventually the human emotions of greed, where you think something's going to go on forever, it reverts, right? And then there's a correction to the downside. And if uh, there's a paradigm shift in the macros, then there, you could have a more a longer consolidation. But look at that, look in 2000, right here, 2003, the distance from the 16 year moving average was from below zero going above zero. And that's very bullish in TA when something is negative where nobody wants it and it starts showing relative strength, it refuses to go lower and decides, hey, I'm gonna stay above this long-term meaningful moving average. But at the, remember, I don't know if you remember this, but uh, I. I've read that in the late 2000s, uh, I think in UK, they got rid of all their gold. I think Canada also, around that time, they sold at the bottom. Even, I think, in the, the Baron, it says that death of gold. Gold is a paper, ro- is a weight paper, paperweight? Is that how you say it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. But you hear those things, but then as a chart trader, when you, there's rampant fear and it says, gold, what are you doing with that? Because people are living in the past, Andrew. They've just... They just remember 10 years, 20 years of desolation. They remember the peak of all these people losing money, buying at the peak. But if you're being objective and look at the chart, it's a new, it's a cycle that restarted in 2003. And you should have loaded the boat, long-term meaningful trend. These are the opportunities of once in a lifetime to buy in 2003 gold. And then again, you see it rolled up. It got stretched away from its 16-year moving average. And I put some circles where previously it hit some resistance. And what happened after that? A small blow off top, and then it went back in hibernation. But here's the new opportunity right now. We're creating higher lows on the distance from that 16 year moving average. And there's a clear, clear pivot line or breakout line where a pivot line in TA is lines, guys, is the most it gets tested from above or below. It becomes meaningful. There's a, the market's reacting to that line. So you got to pay attention to it. Look, we're right below it. 
So the bull run for gold has not even started. It's practically hasn't started, uh, Andrew. It's crazy. We're just, the momentum's trying to carve out a new, a higher low right here. And I'm pretty sure that once we close above the, that 71% above that 16-year moving average, we're going to have fireworks. Because there's another concept in TA called reverse symmetry moves. So the faster it goes down, there's not a lot of uh, buyers on the way down. So on the way back up, there's not that many bag holders uh, in like in strong moves going down, right? So it cr kind of creates a vacuum. There's going to be a crazy move where gold's going to expand from 71% above its moving average all the way to 175%. I think without even blinking an eye, it's just going to it's just going to vacuum up, just like it did in the mid 70s. That pause, you see how it went down fast. As soon as it got back above this bit, this line here, it just rocketed up and overshot. And even from 1983, we did a reverse symmetry move. Even if it's 30, 40 years later, it doesn't matter. Fast down, fast up. And uh, this is a setup, Andrew. So when I see that, stackers, good for you. You're buying super cheap right now. And traders, if you had a chance to, to play this gold market, uh, swing traders or position traders, uh, look at that. When you're coiled close to that 16-year moving average, these opportunities, they don't happen that often, guys. They happen once here. Here we crossed above in 2018. That was the last chance, the last greatest chance. And now we're having another opportunity for gold. It's crazy. Patrick, can I ask you, um, where in, uh, I don't know if you've got able to pull this up, but um, wh what, do you, what did you see? You know, when we um, had that EFP blow up in uh, March, 2020, what what was that like a was that like a, a a surprise on the charts or was it already something that you'd seen coming? Hey, well, okay, yeah, I could show you if you don't mind, guys. I'm gonna go uh, interactive with you guys. I'll put the gold chart up. Please, yeah, please do. Okay, guys. So here's the gold chart, monthly candles. So, so I don't know. Uh, maybe Andrew, you can enlighten me also here. This gold breakout in June of 2019 is something, that's the market telling you uh, something incredible happened here. But nobody was talking inflation back then. I was one of the only ones, everybody was talking, Patrick, uh, we've had this inflation since 2013. Something cr like crazy, 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 crazy happened back then off this base. Th this is the, the most beautiful TA chart you could ever see what happened in 2019 above a three-year moving average or one-year moving average. But look at the March Madness, gold was going up, up, you cannot. You could practically not see March Madness. Uh, I call it March Madness. There, it's a wick. Look at that. It went all the way down here. It closed the month practically at the same place where it started. It. If I put it on the line chart, you can, you could barely see it on the gold chart. How much gold is resilient? Even if on a smaller time frame something happens, gold knew its destiny was. Well, I can't like it had a high probability of doing a reverse symmetry move, just like I'd shown you, fast down huge base and as soon as you break out fast move up and it overshot a little bit here in the in the 2020 look i'll show you even the gfc crisis in a create like in a huge liquidity event gold never closed below its inclining three or moving average so with gold guys you can't look at the daily chart please you'll get destroyed <laughs> the daily chart hourly chart uh gold is a long-term play you have to spot these opportunities where is a paradigm shift in behavior where the U.S. equities are underperforming, uh, where hedge fund managers, they just they get punished by putting their money in the stocks that are not doing well with inflation. They, they start going into gold because if they don't, they'll just get punished uh, for that whole cycle. And gold just keeps climbing up until it closes back below three moving average. You hold on for dear life. And look, we just started a new cycle. It's crazy how I hear like uh, it's over. Like, guys, until you close back below a three-year moving average, you got to let this dog run, man. It's uh, The low entry was here. Of course, if you bought at the highs here in August 2020 when, the, when Warren Buffett was buying gold and all that stuff, it kind of hurts because you've suffered emotionally 18 months of sideways move. But this is actually the launch pad for the next move because in TA, what it, it loves to do is create up moves and then consolidate sideways to create a... Uh, like a magnetic repulsion of the higher time frame and just compresses, compresses, and then bam, explodes, sideways move, explodes, sideways move. This was actually just the first explosion we've had in this bull, this bull era. It's just the first one. We might have two others, but the more you wait for these occasions, 
the next time we have an explosion, we're probably going to shoot up all the way here to 31 or 3300 or wherever it is, it lands. Then a lot of people are going to get in there. You're going to hear about hearing about gold going to 10,000 when it's at three. That's when you should say, okay, it's going to move sideways, guys. It's, it's just going to reset naturally. And then we get ready for another move up. So, yeah, so for what ha whatever happened here, gold did not really care about that event because the micro tidal waves driving gold is not March Madness. It's not COVID. Gold broke out in 2019 off something totally different. Uh, it's the inflation adjusted US dollar. You're like, it's reacting more to macro tidal waves that have been set 40 years ago, 50 years ago since we went off the gold standard. And this is just playing out. So all these noises, even if there's a liquidity crunch right now, I'm not like, it's not gonna worry me too much as long as gold stays above uh, its uh, three year moving average. Well, it, it makes sense to me. I think it makes sense to me sort of, sort of looking at it from, I mean, uh, you've, you've just highlighted, you know, the, the trigger point was earlier than that. And I think that makes sense because we saw a very strong physical market at that point as well. I mean, obviously this is paper and physical combined, but we saw a very strong physical market. And, and obviously um, what happened was, is it was what caused the event of March 2020 was the fact that the exchange for physical mechanism blew up. Why? Because there was so much physical demand uh, and then COVID hit where the refineries just happened to uh, be shut down. Uh, and suddenly you've got this supply crunch into what you already illustrated was already a very strong bull market. So what that did was then suddenly we took the, the <laughs> turn around and turn to the liquidity provider and say, oh, you know, those, uh, those long spot contracts you've got, deliver them. Well, hang on, panic, panic. That happened immediately that on one day when everyone came in and said at the same time and said, we want to buy physical. What happened was the exchange for physical conduit broke. There was a, everyone was scrambling to cover undeliverable over the counter longs. And what happened is that uh, it forced up to a hundred dollar spreads in the futures market where these positions were hedged. So it's interesting because sometimes we need to look at the technical side of things as well. So that's very illustrative. Thank you, Patrick. Well, yeah, I've always had the idea that a, a news event or something that happens in a bull run would have a tendency to resolve in the favor of the bull run. And uh, things will t align in a way that whatever blow up happens, there's so much pressure that was already built up, it's gonna swivel in the direction of the bull run. While you could have this type of event in the downtrend and it might not, it might create a bounce, but maybe not as strong as it would have in a bull run. So look, the way I see it, you gotta let the runner a chance. So yes, on a smaller time frame, gold is looking down, silver on the daily, weekly chart, they're, they're in downtrends. But eventually those small waves will hit a tidal wave of something more important that if you don't zoom out 40 years, 20 years, you're going to get blindsided because if you're starting to short, short gold now in silver because you, you sound the smart time frames are going down. But as soon as the, the, the waves crash into that inclining three year moving average, uh, you're a dead man walking, man. You won't even see the tsunami there coming, uh, coming to lift the, that tide, that tide up. And could you could you delve into silver, especially today, as we've um, as we now have obviously a very counterintuitive short term move, um, basically into very close to twenty two today, um, and the as you talk about the ratio trade, I mean uh, almost eighty four uh, this this in this last three weeks into this selling. So it'd be interesting just to see your take on that, please, Patrick. Well, okay, so if I could just set the stage just for with the big picture chart of, of silver. Here is the monthly chart for silver. I did the same exercise I did with gold distance from that 16 year moving average. But look, these lines, they, they got so stretched in the 1980s, they're 880% uh, above that 16 year moving average. But look historically right now where it is, it's so, 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 so close to that 16 year moving average, guys. It's right below us. We blew here, March Madness, silver blew up. Uh, above that 16 year moving average. And now it's pole flag, and it's getting really close to that 16 year moving average. 
And in nut trend, silver has even shown that it doesn't like staying too close. Here in 2005, it, that's the closest it got. So we could feel that pressure of that 16-year moving average repulsing silver up like uh, like a beach ball. You can't keep under the water. You try, it's just going to shoot it up super violently. So from a risk to reward profile, th this is as low as it gets, $20, $15, silver, anything below 25 it, it's uh, historically cheap, right? It, that long-term moving average is just coming to, to push it up. So don't wait, guys, until you're super stretched. This, if you had a chance to load up, these 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 10 20 years opportunities these are the opportunities to load up so if i if i could circle back why silver is going silver is like a financial metal so the gold to silver ratio is essentially telling you if there's going to be a risk off risk on event it has sometimes i have a feeling it has practically nothing to do with what silver is or gold is it's just the markets the capital flows going more into gold and less into silver when they think the us equities are going to get sold off hard here is March Madness. Now this is March 2008. See the gold silver ratio shoots up. So gold is holding pretty strong, but silver got hit a lot harder. So people are leaving silver. They're going to gold or the US dollar. Here's March Madness a spike up. So what's been happening now is the risk, the gold silver ratio is telling me we're at risk. As long as this crescendos upwards, at any moment we could have a violent, like, oh my God, like US equities go down 10, 15%, silver gets sold off. But this is temporary and should be seen as eventual fuel because eventually wherever this gold silver ratio is, this will be wherever it, it because eventually they're going to print so much more money or the real macro tower waves are going to come in. And these are going to create opportunities where wherever if silver breaks out here, the gold silver ratio goes up here, then this will create an opportunity to fuel silver on the way down because you don't want to buy silver when the gold silver ratio is down here at 32. It's it's uh, that's when everybody's talking about silver, but it's uh, it's going to want to revert to mean, right? It is, uh, based on a historic, you know, like uh, pattern. So that's pretty much my take on silver right now. Weakness in silver has nothing to do with silver. I think it just has to do with uh, potential liquidity event. And if if there's no market crash, Andrew, then from here we're just gonna we're just gonna we're just gonna. This is just a bear flag. So pull. The flag's going up and then it's going to go back down here just like here this is for a long time i thought this is what we were building out here uh the gfc crisis goes down sideways and then this is was the melt up in silver from 2010 to 2011. so if this wedge we have to keep a close eye on it either we crescendo up and it's end of the world or the the fed says something today where markets say oh man the they're going to stop uh, their Q, QT or whatever they're doing and silver's going to rock it because it's going to have to price in uh, all this uh, like money in circulation expansion once again, you know, and then so we're close. We're close, Andrew. Either we crash or everything gets subdued and uh, silver moves up from here. But it's, it's, it's just so cheap historically, like Jesus, man, uh, I, it's, it's just cheap historically. <laughs> it's, it's hard to put in other words. Well, was uh, we, we recently <laughs> interviewed Robert Kiyosaki. The, he kept saying, I must, he must have said 20 times, how much physical do you own? And, and to be honest, yes, that's really all that matters at this point um, is that, um, you know, really there's so much going on right now. And so fundamentally speaking, absolutely. Why would you not be, I mean, as you say, even, even technically the downside looks limited. Uh, from what you're showing there, but from fundamental perspective, uh, this is a massive bargain territory. And um, as you say, everything from the ratio trade, what, I mean, goodness me, I mean, we could be historically 12 to one, I mean, 16 to one, I mean, and, and, and really I do view it as fair value at 32 to one right now. So, um, but anyway, it's interesting, but thank you so much for sharing this, these charts and I know we don't have much time today but we would love to have you back uh, Patrick and um, to share some more of your thoughts I, I love that Andrew and uh, yeah there's just so many charts we, we could have went through the currency pairs that affected the metals that affect the miners it's uh, look every day there even I listen to you and then you're giving me an idea for a chart and then I go oh he's talking about that then I go look at the commitment of traders I go look at the premium versus discount and 
it's the fundamental guys. You're giving me ideas to see. I want to see in the chart. And then it's like kind of a, it's proof or it could disprove or sometimes I could show that there's a lag within a fundamental story and what how much time it takes for the market to price that in. So yeah, it'd be an, an honor there to, to chat with you uh, at a later time there. I, absolutely. And, and people can follow you on Twitter, I know. And obviously, we're going to put a link up um, for your um, for your company. And uh, and obviously, there's, um, you know, there's, there's huge value here for anyone that's serious about the metals. And uh, so yeah, I, I think that's something that um, we, we should be doing. And, and obviously, I will be also following you on Twitter. And um, I shall do that today. And really interesting stuff. Patrick, cool. thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much, Andrew McGuire and Patrick Kareem, for that fascinating discussion. Remember, everyone, buy physical and understand the difference between what Andy affectionately calls the casino paper, gold, and silver markets and the actual physical gold and silver markets. They're not the same. Don't be fooled. And there you have it. That's all we have for you today on another episode of Live from the Vault. So please help. Spread the word about this channel by hitting that like button, sharing, subscribing, and click on the bell right there if you'd like to be notified as each episode goes live. So with that, we'll see you next time on Live from the Vault. See you then.